Congress has released the text of what its authors are calling the Russian sanctions bill from hell. And although relations with Russia are already considered to be near an all-time low, RT correspondent Anya Parampel explains how the bill would further damage ties. Defending American security from Russian Aggression Act of 2018 was introduced in the Senate on August 1st, and its text was posted online in full on Tuesday. The bill is sponsored by a bipartisan group of senators, including Lindsey Graham, John McCain, Bob Menendez, and Gene Shaheen. Its stated objective is to, quote, strengthen the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to combat international cybercrime and to impose additional sanctions with respect to the Russian Federation. The proposed sanctions will restrict activities of eight Russian financial institutions, cap the size of Russian energy projects individuals are allowed to invest in, restrict the sale of tech services and other support to Russian crude oil development, restrict Russian uranium imports, and prohibit the purchase of Russia's sovereign debt. The bill also calls for sanctions against any Russian national engaged in transactions with someone, quote, that has the capacity or ability to support or facilitate malicious cyber activities. Critics say these sanctions go too far and that they'll ultimately hurt U.S. allies that do business with Russia. But the document doesn't only cover sanctions. It also defines key U.S. foreign policy positions. The bill cements the U.S. view of Crimea as a, quote, sovereign territory of Ukraine and states Washington will never recognize Russia's annexation of the peninsula. It also accuses Moscow of, quote, enabling the brutal regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria to commit war crimes and it declares that Russia is responsible for the chemical attack which targeted former Russian double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia in the United Kingdom earlier this year. Despite the fact that as of now, not even UK police have confirmed Russia is responsible for the attack. The bill also bizarrely calls for the director of national intelligence to produce a report determining the net worth of Russian President Vladimir Putin and even asks the State Department to consider whether or not Russia should be classified as a state sponsor of terrorism. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev says his country views actions to sanction its banks to be a declaration of economic war. And Moscow has vowed to retaliate against any new measures. But, Scotty, with Congress on vacation until September, it's hard to gauge how much support there is for this bill at the moment. However, many believe it will not be passed in its entirety. Well, Anya, it seems like some members of Congress are totally trying to undermine U.S.-Russia relations. U.S. Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky he just returned back uh, from a trip to Russia. What does he have to say about his colleagues? Yes, yeah, Senator Paul did pay a visit to Moscow in St. Petersburg last week. Part of his mission was reportedly to deliver a letter from President Trump to President Putin. Uh, he's since lashed out at his fellow lawmakers and called for the normalization of ties with Russia. The Republican described members of his party as neoconservative, adding that many Democrats have recently become, quote, diplomatic isolationists. Not good. Well, for more, we go to Dan Kovalik, professor of international human rights at the University of Pittsburgh and author of The Plot to Scapegoat Russia. Dan, thanks for joining us. If these sanctions Thank go you. into place, who will ultimately feel the impact? Well, certainly the Russian people will feel, feel it, and that's the point of sanctions like this, is to put pressure on the population to effectuate political change in their country. In that way, it's truth, truthfully a form of terrorism because it is trying to punish the civilian population uh, for political ends. It's also, by the way, illegal to impose such sanctions unilaterally without the Security Council um, uh, approving it, which, of course, is the plan here. So it's both illegal and it will be uh, quite devastating to the Russian people. Well, it's interesting. What justification does the State Department have for labeling Russia a state sponsor of terror? I think it has none. I mean, uh, again, uh, people have to remember that right after 9-11, uh, President Putin actually uh, called uh, President George W. Bush, and uh, he was the first world leader to offer his condolences after 9-11 to offer help in the war on terror. And Russia has actually given help in the war on terror, um, including uh, help fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan, 
help fighting Al Qaeda, and of course, as we know, helping to fight ISIS um, in Syria. So, if anything, Russia is a bulwark against terrorism. Well, we did see Senator Rand Paul travel to Russia last week. He got a little bit of flack for it, in fact. What do you think he was actually trying to accomplish by going over there and seeing what the actual going ons were with his own eyes? Well, I think Rand Paul, in my view, is one of the few grown ups in the room. Um, I think he was engaging in his own form of diplomacy with Russia, trying to take the temperature down between the two countries, which I think is a good thing. I think that was the main reason uh, he did that. Well, there are people on both sides. There's bipartisan support for this bill. It still won't pass, me feel like. Are lawmakers kind of just using this in a campaign election year to just grandstand and kind of attract cameras and attention to themselves? I would think so. I mean, it looks like this Russia bashing is, uh, you know, has been used for political gain now for about a year and a half. Going into the midterms, certainly the Democrats have nothing else but the Russiagate scandal uh, to run on, and some Republicans as well. So, yes, I do think this is a bit of grandstanding. But, of course, the danger is that the grandstanding will actually amount to something and that it will get passed. And I think it will, for the reasons that Anya gave, uh, solidify bad relations with Russia for a long time to, get, to come. Well, Dan, I'm sure you talk about this in your book, The Plot to Scapegoat Russia. Thanks for joining us tonight on this. We're going to continue to see this story develop as politicians never stop grandstanding in an election year, it seems. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.